The book is called The Domino Effect, and the subtitle is How Strategic Moves for Gay Rights, Singles Rights, and Family Diversity Have Touched the Lives of Millions. So it, it's a, a memoir of, of the last four decades of my advocacy, but it's also a book about strategy, about change, about creativity, and it's forward-looking because we also talk in, I talk in the book about where things are headed in terms of equal rights for people, for minorities and for sexual minorities, for unmarried people and so on. But it's also, it also looks to the back. It looks backward to um, the past because we really can't uh, plan for the future without understanding where we've come from and where we are now. So the book has a little bit about the past, present, and the future. And I would say that for anyone who loves history, or loves politics, or loves strategic games, they're going to like this book because it's all in there. If you like to play chess, this is a chess game with politics and law. The, the book uh, talks about the real life uh, situations that people have found themselves in as victims of discrimination, whether it's police harassment of gay men in the 1970s, or whether it's landlords refusing to rent to unmarried heterosexual couples, or whether it's employers refusing uh, to hire or firing gays or lesbians, or the denial of equal benefits to people who live in non-traditional families. So it's about a lot of issues and, and survivors of relationships uh, where someone died in an unmarried relationship and then the blood family comes in to try and take over and the person who survives is trying to fight back and I've helped them with, with these types of cases. So there's, there's a little bit of everything here. It's, it's history, it's politics, it's law, it's uh, human interest stories, uh, it's strategy and creativity. So it's, it's a book not just for lawyers and law students, it's a book for the average person as well because this book and what it represents represents everyone's life in America. Uh, so many of the activities, uh, cases and projects and causes that I've been involved in and that are mentioned in the book, they didn't just happen by themselves, they triggered other things to happen, which triggered other things to happen. So, you know, the domino effect, if you strategically place the dominoes in the right way, you can touch one domino and over time, you'll be uh, toppling dozens and dozens of dominoes in different directions, depending on how elaborate it is. So I finally settled on the domino effect because it's an action-oriented word, it's a strategic word, and it's a word that actually um, uh, projects uh, into the future. The book has uh, you know, quite a few chapters. Uh, it starts out early on with a chapter called Birds of a Feather. Young gay law students shake up the legal system. And for people in today's society, they wouldn't realize that back in the early 70s for uh, people in law school who were gay or lesbian, we didn't even know if we were going to be allowed to get our license to practice law. Because back then, private sex between consenting adults who were unmarried, especially homosexual sex, was a felony. So we, we thought, gee, you know, you, you have to certify, the, the state bar has to certify that you have good moral character before you can, you know, take your oath and swear to uphold the Constitution and, and implement the laws. And even the dean of my school said, uh, I can't tell you whether they're going to certify you or not. Because at that point, I had made a decision to be openly gay, that it was not going to be silence anymore. We were not going to be invisible. And a few of us uh, banded together. And in Los Angeles, we started the first gay law student association in the nation. So that chapter tells the story early on uh, of an era in the 70s when there were no openly gay lawyers or law students anywhere in the nation, and a few of us broke that barrier uh, to become visible and to start educating the legal system and the judges and so on. So and while, while it starts off with a gay story and a personal story, you know, we go on to, to other uh, chapters that talk about redefining the family. And, and 
the importance there of de redefining the family, how it's defined often depends who gets benefits and who doesn't. It defines who, where you can live in a single area zone for single family use, or whether you have to live in some other area of the city. Uh, it, de it depends on whether you can visit someone in the hospital uh, when they're sick. So it was so important to define family in a broad and expansive manner. And that, that chapter tells some very interesting stories and strategic political stories of how we created a new family registry in the state of California uh, out of thin air. And then how there, and in this new system that we created with the Secretary of State, it talks about how the, um, the radical right uh, went crazy. They couldn't stand it, how they fought back, how they tried to stop it. Uh, even though it was just symbolic mostly, they couldn't stand it. So, and then it goes, goes on to a chapter on singles rights to talk about single people. Uh, most single people are heterosexual, but gay people are also single people. But in our society, we're a very couples-oriented society and family-oriented society, and there's a lot of discrimination against single people in our society. And of course, times have changed. Right now, today, there are 104 million unmarried adults. The majority of the uh, households in the nation are headed by unmarried adults. And yet our federal laws do not prohibit marital status discrimination. And many states don't prohibit marital status discrimination. So single people pay the same or even more taxes sometimes to support a system that won't protect them from discrimination. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people in the book that are mentioned who uh, have done some great things. Former Governor Jerry Brown, uh, who probably wants to be governor again. Talk about things, life recycling, you know, he may, may be governor again. Uh, he was a, a major leader, uh, issuing executive orders, uh, prohibiting sexual orientation discrimination, appointing openly gay judges, uh, and other uh, uh, appointments. Uh, former. Um, President of our Senate, uh, David Roberti, uh, did so many things uh, to block bad legislation and to uh, implement good legislation uh, in, in California, especially for the gay and lesbian community. And, uh, and then people like um, uh, Burt Pines. He was our city attorney of Los Angeles for eight years. He came in in the era where Ed Davis was chief of police and Ed Davis was so anti-gay and the police department was harassing gay men and entrapping them and arresting them and they were losing their jobs. It was just a horrible, horrible era in the early and mid-1970s. Then in the LA City Council, uh, Councilman Mike Wu, the first Asian American uh, on the LA City Council, it was a breakthrough. Well, he was very progressive and I went to him and asked him to create a task force on family diversity. One of the first things that happened was the LA City Council adopting a domestic partnership benefits program for city employees, the first major city in the nation to adopt domestic partnership. So that was a breakthrough. The book has its own website, which is dominoeffectbook.com. So if anyone goes to dominoeffectbook.com, they'll find out information about the book, how to order the book. Mm -hmm. So uh, they can go to that website, and in addition to being able to purchase the book, they also can learn more about other aspects of things, and then I'll be updating the website as different events occur. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. For example, we're having an event uh, October 11th of 2009 uh, uh, in West Los Angeles, it's, the event is called The Book Comes Alive, and truly, the book will come alive, and I'll have a chance to thank the people, they'll have a chance to make a statement about it, and then we'll put uh, things on the website about that.